Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Todd here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and on this episode of Real Insights, my guest is Tammy Stronach, who stars in Man and Witch, The Dance of a Thousand Steps. Hello, Tammy. Hi, hi, how are you? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to meet you. And first off, I have to say, Happy 40th anniversary to you and the iconic film, The Never Ending Story, which just turned 40 just a couple days ago now. It's wild. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> also, I have to say happy early birthday to you as well. Yeah, there's so many birthdays going on. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. I'm a 7-Eleven baby. So July 11th was my birthday. So July birthdays rock, right? Definitely. Wait, so are you a Leo? <laughs> uh, cancer. Cancer. Awesome. My, my fiance's birthday is tomorrow. She's a Leo. <laughs> and my dad's birthday is, uh, I think, the 28th of this month. So okay, that's July birthdays. That's what it is. <laughs> Tons of celebration, which I love. Yep, totally. But also congrats on this new film, Man in Witch, The Dance of a Thousand Steps. It is no easy task to create a film. So that's just a, quite the milestone, I must say. Thank you. No, it is, uh, it's difficult to even overstate how, how impossible it is to make an Indian get it into theaters. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's like the birth of, of, of man in which there's one more birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of celebration. Like I said, I love it. Did you ever imagine your journey would lead you to creating a magical film? I mean, with your husband and your daughters in this too, right? I, I spotted yeah. that correctly. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this is that it really was a family affair. And my uh, my daughter is 10 when she was in it. And I was 10 when I was in The Never Ending Story. And then my husband wrote it. And then we got to act together. And the whole family got to go to Scotland for a year together. And it was just, um, it's like a little snapshot of our family. So obviously, it's a story that we want to share for the wider world. But that element of it was super special. I can't say enough, like what a great job. Like what, a, I can't believe it just to make a film to actually have that idea and just do it. And it's, <laughs> it's done. It's awesome. Like I can't imagine myself going out and say, I'm going to make a film. It's, it takes a lot of hard work. So you got to be proud of yourself for this. I need to know when did this idea come about and what really inspired you to take on this project? So I'm going to give a lot of credit to my husband. Um, he, felt that I should do one more film um, or, you know, just get back into acting. My dancing career was winding down. I'd been a, you know, dancer and choreographer for a long, long time. And my body had all kinds of injuries and uh, the next chapter was calling, but I wasn't sure what it would be. And um, he was like, let's make a 10 minute short. And I was like, that sounds fun. You know, we were acting and plays together in New York. And he's like, let's do something for film. And then that 10 minute short turned into a screenplay, which he ended up giving to me on my birthday. And it was a feature film. I was like, oh, I better like this. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> and, I, and I read it and I loved it. I loved it so much. And I was like, oh gosh, now um, I haven't, you know, I have to make this. And then the other thing is we had a daughter and we weren't really seeing these kinds of movies. And I felt like there was like an appetite for it. And then on top of that, there was all these weird things that happened. Like they painted a Falcor on the building next to my house. <laughs> City block Spotify ad of Falcor. <laughs> and then I was watching Stranger Things and the Lamal song came on and so I did the Millie Bobby Brown challenge and like did the dance challenge and um yeah I just just felt like there were all these kinds of funny little um indicators that there was an appetite for a fantasy film that was gonna you know kind of have some nostalgia factor to it and um and I love the script and for me you know I never stopped acting I was still acting in plays in New York um I just didn't I just didn't pursue being an actor in film um but obviously with the right project it was a kind of like I couldn't resist 
Yeah, my inner child really loved this movie. And as soon as I saw Talking Animals, I, that's the easiest way to win my inner five-year-old, uh, the five-year-old Sean, right? Like, I was just like, oh, yes, Talking Animals. That's a, that's the way to win me over. I always grew up loving any any animal that talked. Like, I was glued to the screen. Uh, what parts of the film do you think children will be drawn to and what elements will draw the uh, adult audience to? Well, the the there's one animal that quotes only talks in movie quotes <laughs> and that's for all the dads in the audience and it's so funny because every time we we screen it it's just all the dads and <laughs> like they just know every single line <laughs> um and and the women are like huh you know <laughs> some of them do some of them know it um and then um we really tried to put something in there for everyone um kids love the puppets um, and then kids really respond to the princess like storyline The that's the one that like all the like the young kids like get so excited when they find out like what happens to her and they're like, yay. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, you know, the, the, the old Gen Xers, I think we all want to believe in second chances and that we're not, you know, too old to be loved or to, you don't have to be perfect to be loved. You deserve, you deserve, you know, to be seen and, and loved, even if you're, you know, complicated and flawed. And, <laughs> and so um, we really tried to put something in there for everyone. Yeah, that's for sure. There's something for everybody uh, in this film. Another Sean, not me, Sean Astin, who I'm a big fan of, voices one of the animals. Can we talk about this cast? I mean, which also includes Christopher Lloyd. Um, what what a cast and like, how did this come up? How'd you come up with this? Well, so the dog the dog is the is the best friend in in the script, and I sort of met Sean through the Comic Con circuit. And when I read it, I was like, Sean has to be the best friend because I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. And, you know, he gets Frodo all the way. He's just like, he's the, he's the iconic best friend. Like you, you can't have a better best friend than Sean. <laughs> he just has that. So um, I happened to kind of know him through the Comic-Con circuit and that kind of softened uh, my way to reach him there. And um, he loved the script, which was really how he signed on. And it was the pandemic. So I think he wasn't so busy. So we kind of lucked out with that. Um, yeah. And I feel like the, the cast just really responded to the script and they wanted to do it because it seemed fun. And we kept pinching ourselves. Like we just couldn't believe it. Like we kept on, we kept, we, we shot for the like, like when I heard the voice, I, I, we, we asked for the, the actor we thought would be the best person. And it just kept on happening. It was crazy. <laughs> no, I love it. Especially Christopher Lloyd, but also, uh, Shorai Agdashlu, a fantastic and iconic Persian actress. I'm Persian as well. So I need My to know how I've seen, I'm sorry. We'll have yes, to keep it. Yes, I love that. So I was like, how'd you get her on board? And did you use some of your Farsi lore? Which is also, I have to say, such a great, really cool thing about you. You be actually being born over there and your parents being archaeologists. I just thought it was so cool. Uh, not yeah. many people get to experience Iran as well. And you got to do it at, at a young age. Uh, but yeah, tell me about bringing her on board too. And just, you know, your love for the Persian culture too while you're at it. <laughs> so um, Shorei, uh, we reached out to uh, Shorei we um, had initially had um, Rhea Perlman slated to play my mom. And then the project took so long because of the pandemic and all the ups and downs and restarts and nah, 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 that we ended up having to recast um, her. And so we reached out to Shorey and, and I shared that I grew up in Iran and I shared that, you know, my favorite food was gourmet sabzi. And like, it was just, we just, and then we got so excited when she wrote us back and, you know, very much like some of the other actors, she wrote back that she'd been sort of craving doing a fantasy film. She was craving doing something hopeful and fun. And um, she was so kind. She said that it read like a poem. And then, um, and then um, she plays my mother. I'm the witch, she's my mother. And so I really needed to cast someone. My mother in the film is based off of my real mother. So somebody really warm and really charismatic and just, 
was perfect. And then on top of that, the night before the shoot, she brought us over to her house and she cooked us a huge Persian meal with all of my favorite foods. I mean, come on, that's Persian hospitality for you right there. They go all out. And, um, and then we just bonded. We bonded. We talked about leaving Iran. We talked about um, the way in which art kind of creates a glue for people between cultures. It's almost like its own community. You know, it, it transcends passports. It's like, uh, how do you, you know, what kind of um, connections can you forge through it? And then uh, by the time we were on set together, like we were just like, oh my God, we were like giggling so much. It was terrible. Like we had to keep on like being stuck. We're gonna start the scene now. <laughs> it was so fun. I love that. I mean, that's just a cool nugget about yourself too. I, I love that you have that experience and that background and just uh, being uh, experienced Persian culture in general. Not many people get to unless they're Persian per se. Uh, so that's really fantastic. I feel like your, your, your journey is almost full circle. Obviously it started with the never ending story, uh, which has become a beloved classic. I just need to know how does it feel to be part of something that touched so many lives over the years, the decades, the generations. And now you get to make a movie that kind of, you know, the reason why you're making it is because of where it started. Uh, it is, it is like coming full circle and I, I feel like a little overwhelmed if I'm really honest like I can't I can't believe it <laughs> you know I'm I'm surprised at the sticking power of the never ending story I had no idea it would have that when I was 10 it's so moving that it means so much to people it was such a surprise you know coincidence that I ended up in that film you know i can't take credit for it it's michael and his story you know i just am like holding on on the side i got to like get on the train you know <laughs> and um and it it's just very it's it's i feel lucky i feel lucky to have been included in that legacy and i also um i also just feel like a lot of people ask me like well why didn't you go to hollywood and act more and you know you could have, the never ending story could have launched so many things for you. And for me, it's like, well, it launched, for me, the story of the never ending story launched my passion to be a creative person and to live a life in the arts and to um, try to, you know, have courage and like put myself out there. And I feel like that's what the, that's what the, the heart of the never ending story is about. So in a lot of ways, um, yeah, Man and Witch is is a product of me daring to like do what I dream, you know, <laughs> like daring to like take this risk. And thank you, Never Ending Story. Thank you for that message. I need that message as much as anybody else. Like we all need that message. It's for me too. <laughs> No, I love that. You're definitely embedded in pop culture, which is really cool to think of as well. I mean, that's such an accomplishment. And you're, you made this film that's really fun. And uh, I'm really looking forward to like other stories and maybe other genres you're interested in exploring. Uh, I want to see more from you. So please don't go away. Uh, give us more. Deliver. We're, we're so excited that you're back. Well, we do have ideas for a sequel, um, but you know, obviously we have to see how this one lands. Um, I just really just want to close with encouraging people to see it in the theater though, because you know, it's so hard for an indie to get into the theater and it's so much better in the theater. At the premiere we had yesterday, people dressed up in like fantasy and Ren fair and cosplay. And it was just so, great to see people playing and communing together with other like fantasy fans and just having fun you know so i just i think it's important that we like gather together and we take a little break and feel a little hopeful so go to the theater Ju uh, july 28th and 30th and um and yeah and if we can get enough people to see it we've got plenty more stories cooking up right here in this little office <laughs> That's so exciting to hear. Tammy, this was so wonderful. Hopefully we get to do it again. And so until next time. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nortropolis. And stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.